everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing, I think it is, advent calendar. I have totally enjoyed making this. It has been so much fun. It's something that I've actually had the plan for for a while. So the the idea for this is basically every single box will fit a Tunnix tea cake. So you'll see there, they're about two and one eighth squared and or a tonic snowball as well which would be really appropriate for christmas but they i'm not sure if you can get them all individually packed i think they are actually no tell a lie i think they are anyway check out the tonic snowballs because that's just marshmallow whereas the tonic's tea cake is marshmallow with a biscuit base both amazing anyway enough of that you know i love them so i wanted to make an advent that was going to fit them in so the shape of this has evolved because of the layout i always wanted to have a scene so here you'll see all these lights along the top i've got these trees i've got the artificial snow i've got a little sleigh there with the rope to pull it I've got my topper, I've got bunting, toad, toadstools, yeah, toadstools, and um, the trees here as well. So because I wanted this area, I had to kind of work this out, and then you just kind of build it up, and then it had this shape. So by just adding the roof, you have a house shape, and I love it. I, I'd like, really, I love this. I'm so, you should be really proud when you make something, and I'm really proud of this, and I'm really proud of myself that I was able to, you know, lay it all out and kind of start from scratch with it. So this is using white foam board. Now, it's, I've used it before in the past, and I haven't actually ever used it in a tutorial, or maybe I did on one. I think I might have on one tutorial, actually. Anyway, it's a very, very lightweight, easy to use, construction board really and um, it's better not better it's better well it's better to manage and use than grey board or chipboard that's very heavy if you do suffer with any dexterity issues and you maybe can't grip so well I think you'll find working with the foam board much easier because little pressure is needed with a cutting knife to actually cut it it's like cutting butter if you, as long as you've got a sharp knife it's really really easy to to use and the great thing about using this and because it's so deconstructed is that you if you do make a mistake you cut something wrong then you can just recut it again it's it really is it's a very forgiving i guess project so don't be alarmed when you see this those of you that follow me and know my tutorials i break every single step down for you so i have gone over the top with the decoration i always do adding lights and things like that you don't have to do any of that but once you see the blank canvas and how you get to it i think you'll be quite surprised so and i'll just show you what I've used so it's majority is the Christmas tails so the paper is the gingham the red gingham here and then the decoupage is what I've used for the topper and um, the ad actual advent numbers are by Simply Creative and they're these wooden ones and I think they look really nice and just kind of tie everything together even the skinny tinsel that's a Simply Creative everything will be linked below and then on the back you will see the lights so I've got one here and they turn on and off Oh, I don't think I showed the one on, on the rooftop. There's lights running along here. There's a light there, there, and there. So that's the one for the roof. So I just turn that one off. And then these two are for the little scene. And these are actually meant to go in a wine glass. And these are the stoppers that go in the top of the wine glass. And then the lights just light up a, bl a blank wine bottle. But um, they were one pound something each, I think, or two, maybe one ninety nine something like that anyway. Um, I thought they were great because they're lightweight and they're easy to use and they just feed through a little hole in here but again I show you all of that so yeah I hope you like it I hope it inspires you and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial so let me show you how to make it okay so first you're going to need 24 pieces that are five and three eighths of an inch squared and these are going to be for your little boxes your trays and just on all four sides you just want to score at one and five eighths of an inch okay so one and five eighths of an inch one and five eighths, one and five eighths, and one and five eighths. Like I said at the beginning, these have been made so that they will fit a Tunnix tea cake, but then you can put so much more in there as well. So um, that's the two and one eighth, which is what that middle square should be, is the size that I use for my Tunnix tea cake boxes when I'm doing like one on its own. Okay, so that's the scoring. Then you want to fold and burnish those score lines. Okay, and then choose a side, any side, because they're all the same. And you're going to cut down two of the lines there, straight down to the first score line. And then this one here, like so. The opposite side, you want to do exactly the same. 
Okay, these scissors are sticky. These are my favourite scissors, and I use got red tape on them. How bad's that? But you can clean them; it's fine. And then you're going to cut wedges off of the outer squares. Okay, so just that one there. Leave the middle one. You don't need to do anything with that. Again, nice wedge off of there because you don't want any of this poking out the top. And that one there, and then rotate it and do the same. Now you're going to do this on all those other pieces, okay? So you'll have, like I said, 24. You may be able to squeeze 25. We shall see. And you might be able to do something, you know, you might think up another way to add it in, but that's what you need. Then I'm just going to stick this together. So I'm just going to add some glue along one like so. And then just fold that under, bring it around, and just make sure you pull it, you know, kind of wiggle it around a little bit so you get it right flush with the top there. You see? If there is anything overhanging, then you can trim it, but it should marry up nicely and just get rid of any of that excess glue there. Okay, and then I'm going to come to this side here. Again, add some glue, bring this one in. And again, just slide it up because it will come up higher to the top. You see there, I've got a nice front to the box. Because all of my boxes slide out with the folded piece at the front. So this will be where we'll have our decoration and everything on. You don't have to, you could, they're all equal sides. But because there's more of a reinforcement on this one, when you're pulling it in and out, I think that one's going to, you know, just last longer, whereas here they're not reinforced. You can also you can reinforce them by all means, but um, yeah, I've just decided to do it that way. So they're the, you know, that's what you want to focus on in terms of how it looks. I'm going to push that one in as well because it's easier to do. Um, you know, so just look at each end and see which one you prefer from the other. So that would be your front. So these both, you know, marry up nicely. That one looks just as nice as that one, but that's what you're going to decide when we get to decorating them. So that's all you need to do. Now, if you want to go further and decorate inside and all that lot, when we get to that, you can do, but I'm just going to give you the measurements because I'm just going to decorate the front there and that's it. So 24 of those is what you need. Next, we want to start creating the sections that the drawers are going to slide in and out of the little home for them all. Now what I'm using today is this foam board. This is 5mm foam board. Keep that one there for a minute. And I pick it up from Hobby Base. You can get all different sizes. They do, I think the A3 and the A1 are the best value for money because they did do, it was four A1 size sheets for £10. And just to give you an idea, I mean it's not even all of it in here, but this is an A1. It's absolutely huge. And you can see already I've started to cut out of it and I've only used this one for this project. I haven't done my back, I haven't cut the, the background out or the roof yet, but I'd still get it all within this A1 piece and still have plenty left over. And um, like I said, you, you can get A3, you can get A4, you can get all kinds of sizes and you can get all kinds of colours. I liked the white because I don't have to decorate it too much. So inside, that's all the decoration you're doing. You're just folding over a piece of pattern paper on the front because the white looks nice and when you slide your drawer in and out, you know, it's just so much nicer. So that's why I've chose this one. So what you need is, the easiest way to cut this is using a cutting knife and a metal ruler. So that's what I've been using and make sure you have a protective mat. It's very easy, it's like cutting butter. It's not like uh, grey board, which is very, very hard and you have to kind of cut it a few times. This will cut first time all the way through. It's basically two layers of paper and then a layer of foam, but it's a strong foam and it's a strong coated paper as well. Very, very strong stuff and it's great for these kind of projects. So what you want to do is cut uh, four pieces. So one, two, three, four, and these are 12 by two and one eighth of an inch, okay? And then along the, one of the long sides, I've gone for this one because it's nice and straight. I've just ran two strips of red tape on both sides. Then I've cut this piece here, which is 12 by one inch. And again, you'll want four pieces. So whatever your pattern paper is, I've gone for this lovely gingham print for the whole of all my front kind of decoration because I really like it. So you'll want four pieces of those and you're just going to remove the backing from here. 
and then you can use hot glue if you want. I'm going to use the hot glue when I actually attach it but I'm using this glue here just along this side because you've got that 5mm you've actually got a nice surface obviously for us to stick everything together but also to attach the paper and you just want to sit it halfway over okay so you just try and get an equal amount the red tape I've used is half inch red tape so it covers this perfectly must be just under half it no it's not it's three eighths of an inch sorry red tape I was going to say because otherwise this wouldn't cover it properly but if you see there now where I've stuck it just so it's in the middle of that strip you're going to do this on all of these other three pieces and then once that's stuck or at least gripped fold one side over kind of pinch it down and just work along and it will cover that tape and again and it's great for hiding up you know, hiding any bits that you might not be happy with as well. Like you'll see there, look, I've made little mistakes, but it's all going to be hidden in the back. You're not going to see any of that. And then fold the other side over. And you can just flatten the front. But now I've got a nice covered edge there. Okay, so you will have four pieces. Then you want to cut all these little pieces here. So for these, you're going to need 15 pieces, okay, that are one and three quarters by two and one eighth of an inch. And these pieces here are one and three quarters by one inch, these pattern pieces. So again, you're going to need the same amount for that. All of these measurements and quantities will all be in my blog. So I always do say go and check the blog out and use that as your guide. And um, rather than, you know, listening here and having to wait and list everything I'll have it already listed there for you so you want those and you want to stick it exactly the same way so I've got one here that I haven't done so again I've put the tape on the shorter side okay so not that longer one it's on the one and three quarter length both sides and then that's that piece that's one by one and three quarters and again you're going to stick it over um, if you curl it it might help you wrap it around as well so I didn't mention that actually on stuck to me on this one here but if you just grab it and just like that okay it just will help you and again I'm just going to run some of this glue and then just stick it on one side and then just wrap it all the way over it's a bit easier on the smaller ones if you've got anything overhanging which I have there then you can just trim it off and this is why these have been getting so sticky because I've used them a lot on this project today but just trim off any of that you're not going to see all this because it's the sides it's going to be stuck against the rest of it in a minute so 16 pieces I think I might have said 15 it's 16 pieces that you will have okay so then what we want to do is start sticking these down so I'm just going to grab my hot glue and you want to run a bead of glue all the way along here try not to add too much just a thin bead of it and then with one of the boxes pop the box at the end there and pop this next to it. Now you want to make sure, I'll show you, I'll bring it up in a second, so that's in place. Move the box away once you do it because if any glue oozes out like there you don't want your box sticking to it. I'll just get rid of that. Now you want to make sure that when you stick it down that it lines up with the back, okay, that it's flush with the back piece there and obviously everything's nice and straight. Get rid of that bit of hot glue on there. So yeah, just lay it down just as a guide but now once my side goes on that's going to slide in and out nicely okay and then you want to go to the opposite end because you want to get them bang on because there'll be nothing worse than when you go to stick it all together and your boxes on the ends won't fit so again I'm just going to run a bead of glue just along there again not too much these are all going to help you know they're all going to hold each other once you put it all together so they don't they just need to kind of be held in place so again, just sticking that one down. When I bring it up, can you see there's just a, a, like an, a little sliver, tiny little bit of overhang, that's what you want, okay? And again, make sure that it's nice and flush with the back. All right, and then that one's gonna go there. And then if you just kind of hold that in place, bring the next one to, okay? And then just pop that one roughly there, drop that one, and then you can just see, and I know the box is going to fit and I know they fit because I've tested it all so I know this is the right width that you need but again just pop that box like so 
I'm going to grab my hot glue again. Very, very thin bead. Lay that down, take it out, and again, just focus on that back piece and obviously keeping it straight. Okay, so then, so imagine this is this piece here without that on top, okay? So this is your, your this piece, and then you're gonna stick another piece just like this, do this again and stick it on top. So you just run hot glue along the tops of here and stick it on, okay? But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna attach this one to the bottom. And can you see it lines up? Now when you stick them together, you need to make sure that this all lines up. So what you can do is get a ruler and make sure that runs nice and flush with the side okay then the other four that you'll have left over are going to go here like this and then we're going to make a separate piece for the tops but I'm not quite I need to see it all together before I add those pieces in so what I'm going to do now is add hot glue to the tops of all of these and then like I said just I know mine all lines up with these here, so I can use those as a gauge, but I'm just feeling on the side of my hand there that they're lined up, and then just push them all together. Now, I know not everybody likes to use hot glue, and obviously it is really good for this project because it it's an instant, ta like instant grab, but you can use your pin flare, the glue gel here, or you can use the silicon glue. You can even use these glues. Oh, that one's got an air bubble in it. You can use these air, um, these glues. They just take longer. You just have to stand there a bit like this for a bit longer to hold it all in place, okay? That one's a little bit wonky, but I'm sure it's not gonna matter when it's all put together. Oh, that is bugging me. I'm gonna have to try and move that a bit, but that's now what you should have. And then you wanna do exactly the same with these four pieces. You wanna line them up with these ones here, because you know they're gonna fit that in, so you don't need to use that, and this is what I mean, you didn't, you don't need to use that when you do all the other layers, just line them up with each other, but you need to make sure that this is all, it's, it's all about getting it lined up, okay? Apart from that one, which is really bugging me, but hey-ho, we'll sort it out. So now, I'm going to just stick these ones down at the top, because these are gonna hold the three extra boxes. Again, always working with that back piece here okay because if you've got one of these overhanging it will throw out everything that you stick against this it needs to be you know all flush so that what when we go to stick the base on or the back it's got something to stick to so again very thin so I'm just going to do these ones We're going to just pop that to one side and next you want to make these pieces and these are going to be our side pieces at the bottom. So all of this section is going to be where we display everything but these are going to go here and these are what I've got to give you the measurements for. So I've already done that one. So you're going to need two pieces that are five and a half by two and a quarter and you will also want two pieces of one inch by five and a half in the pattern paper and just wrap it over along the long side just as I've got here. So you'll have two, okay? Then you'll want four pieces and these are two and a quarter by two and one eighth of an inch, okay? Because they, they just slightly sit back. Then you want four pieces that are one inch by two and a quarter of pattern paper and again, wrap it all around like I've done. So for this, to get this one, make sure you get your spacing right. You just want to line up this one, because I've already done that, so I'll show you here. So imagine this is this one here. You're going to line it up there and stick that one down. Okay, so get that one stuck in place first. All you need to do is just line it up with that one there, and again, make sure it runs nice and flush Ooh, with the back. Okay, like so. Then you want to stick these pieces in, and what you want to do is grab your box and sit it completely flush with the bottom here, okay? And then stick one down. You want to leave a little bit of a gap above, just a little bit. Whilst you sit it there, I would then go and pop the next one above, just to check, and then pop that one there, because they do sit up against each other, and then hold that one, and then you can check that that's going to slide in. Okay, just check you've got your spacings. 
because I'd hate for you to, you know, stick one in wrong and then the others don't fit. So just find what works best for you in terms of sticking them all down. All right, so I'm going to run again, nice thin piece of glue there and I'm going to run the box completely flush with the bottom and then I'm going to stick this, it will be set back slightly, just a little bit above there, just a little bit. And again, just make sure that it's nice flush with the back. And pop the next box on top. Grab another piece here. Okay, and then do the same on that side with this piece, which I've already done. So now I'm just going to stick that down. I just kept it apart just so you could see the shape of it and how you want it to look. So you can do them all separately and then stick them on towards the end but I'm now just going to stick that one straight in again make sure that back bit I'm just putting my finger on the back here to make sure it's flush with this piece okay so now once that is against something else but that's how it will look it kind of looks like one of those like little spice racks or something some like kitchen storage next you want these two pieces here and these are going to be for the sides here and they want to go flush with the this top one here not right at the top here because this is the roof is going to come down Do you imagine there my hands that's where our roof is going to be so you're going to stick it so it runs completely flush with this top one here and flush on the back it will stick out slightly it's supposed to okay you want that to be overhanging slightly so that all of this looks like it's set inside this frame and then it should, once we stick everything else down, but it should line up perfectly with the bo this, with this here. Okay, I've worked out all the measurements. So this is when we've got a bit more of an area to obviously glue all at the same time, but you want to run hot glue along all of these here. Okay, and again, it's flush with the top, okay? It's flush with the back, and all of those are flush with each other as well, okay? So now you can see it really starts to take its shape and look straight, okay? So I'm gonna do the same on this side. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like this. It's coming together slowly but surely. Okay, and it's solid. This is such a nice, really strong piece. It's just that one there, it's bugging me. But I think once I put everything in, it will be okay and I won't really notice it. Okay, so now I've just cut this piece here, which is to go on the top of this before we attach the roof. And this is seven and a half by, again, two and a quarter. And I've just, again, cut a piece of seven and a half by one inch and wrapped it around just like everything else. And that is gonna stick perfectly over those again making sure the back's nice and flush and you'll have it overhanging which is what you want okay so I'll stick that down the same way with the hot glue in a minute and then I've got my base cut from that same piece so I've still I'll get the roof from that and I'll still have loads left over so this is all from that a1 piece of foam board and this is a piece of four by 14 and a half inches and this is going to go on the bottom I just kind of roughly now I've done it so I have a like a one inch kind of border you see all the way around and on the back there now I'm going to have a lot of snow on mine because I'm going to have these trees down here once I put the back on so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is probably I'm just going to frame just the outside and then once I put all the artificial snow over so depending on what you want to do but you may want to cover this completely and I would just cover it like I would if I'm covering a mini album cover. So if you do want to cover it, then you're probably going to have to maybe join up two pieces of um, eight by eight paper, pattern paper, or, because what would that be? Yes, yeah, so that would be long enough with the overhang, or you're going to have to put two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper together. That's the same pattern. You know, something that's like a print like this would work really well because you wouldn't be able to see the join, and then you'll be able to wrap that all the way around. Just make sure you give yourself about a one inch overhang so you can wrap it under. Um, yeah, that's what you want to do. But I'm just going to stick mine directly onto this because I'm going to be adding a lot of snow. So um, yeah, I would rather have that white 
because the artificial snow is quite clear, but once you add it against the white background, then you really notice it, and I want to pile it quite high. So that's what I'm doing for the base. So I'm going to stick both of those pieces down. So along, again, I'm going to add glue along there. If, when you go to stick it down, so for example here, if your base is rocking, or maybe something isn't slightly, you probably could afford to just take a little shaving off because I did give you a little bit of room above your boxes. Okay, so I mean mine are okay, but if for some reason yours aren't, then you will have a bit of room to be able to move it around. So um, yeah, that's what we need to do next. Okay, so everything is stuck down, the base, all of this. Now I've got the roof. So I've gone and started to prep these two pieces here. So you're gonna want two pieces that are two and a quarter. Now you may want two and a half. So mine is two and a quarter. So it is kind of just overhanging the same as like these pieces. But if you want your roof overhanging even more, see I've just got a little overhang here. If you want yours coming out even more, then just make that wider. Um, I've done the length, which is 10. Mine's just shy because it was, it was, I wanted to get it from that same piece, but 10 will be obviously fine because again, you need to kind of decide on the overhang that you want. So once we stick that there, can you see the overhang here? I just think it looks quite nice. I like that amount of overhang. It's entirely true. I might have some things hanging down here, lights, things like that. But before you stick this down, you might want to cover underneath because the top of my roof, I'm going to do a different pattern paper. But when this is stuck down, you're going to be able to see inside here. I'll just bring that up there, can you see? So if you leave it like that, then it might not look that finished. So I've just covered the back. So if you want to do that on the underside, then you're going to want a piece that is uh, nine and three quarters by two. So I'm going to cut another piece to put on that. And what i also done is I've backed all of the sides. So exactly the same way as we've done everything else. So they're all one inch wide, but then they will be the length of this. So one inch by two and a quarter. And you'll want, although mine's two and three, no, mine's two and three eighths actually. I think it's, it's two and a quarter there, two and three. I think that's just because of the bulk of the card. Two and a quarter. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll want four pieces because two on each piece. And then you'll want four pieces of the 10 by one inch, which will cover all those. So I stuck the two long ones on first and then the sides, but I'm just gonna cut another piece of that just to stick on the back of this one. While that's drying, now also another thing is you may want to cover the inside of here and this top level here because when you put that on okay remember it's always going to be flush with the back when we stick it down in a minute so you have the overhang at the front but you can see in there see that so you may want to cover that I'm not sure if I want to yet because I don't really know what else I'm going to do but one thing I do want to do is I've got this raw edge at the top here and I do want to color that so I'm just going to grab a kind of like a rusty red. I've got one here and I'm just going to just color in the top. I'm gonna to probably have bunting hanging off of this so you won't really see it anyway. But just get a color that's gonna complement. There we go. Once that's over the top, I just think it doesn't look as white, it's quite disguised now. Plus, like I said, I'm probably gonna have bunting running all up here and you're not gonna see any of that anyway. So next we need to stick it down. So grab both pieces. Now, you kind of need to do them together <laughs> because you wanna make sure that you get this piece here in line with the middle of this. So if I used my board, so if I get that line like that, I know I wanna keep it kind of there. But all you're gonna do is add glue hot glue here and here on these corners. That's what it's gonna to attach to. And then we're gonna make a hinge with some more paper over the top of this to hold it together. Okay, I mean, there isn't gonna be any pressure on this. I wouldn't, I mean, I'm not gonna lift mine by the roof or anything like that. And it's, this stuff is so light, this weighs nothing. So um, yeah, again, it's it shouldn't have too much pressure on it. So what I'm gonna do is, you kind of wanna make sure that point is in the center of this square. Okay, that's, that's what, that is the main thing you have to line up. These are both the same length, so as long as you stay, you know, making sure that that sits within the center here, you will have equal overhang here and here. You just need to obviously make sure that you're pushing like this and joining the top. 
I'm going to put hot glue on the very top when I've stuck these two side bits down. So all I'm going to do for the minute is just put hot glue there and there. Make sure it's flush with the back as well, so you have to put your fingers down so you've got the overhang at the front. So it is a little bit fiddly, but um, you should be okay. If you want to use your gel glues and things like that at this point, you know, then you can do so because you, you, we're going to have to hold it for a bit anyway. So I'm going to just go for it. So I'm going to run some hot glue. Okay, I think I've got it. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Like I said, this isn't attached at the top, it's just stuck on those two pieces there. You can see how oh, that's all looking. Once we put the back on, we are almost ready to decorate. I cannot wait. <laughs> and I've just realised what I've done. Has anybody else noticed what I've done? I've put these on upside down. Damn it. Well, I'm going to have to go in somehow and cover that. I'll, I'll be able to do it, it's fine actually, because I can just slide it in. But yeah, don't do that. Although I love that print on top so I guess maybe I will keep the roof that colour because I'm going to add snow to it but yeah that should have been under there hey ho we'll sort that out next I'm going to make just a quick little hinge so you want to make it the same width as this which was two and a quarter and I do I do maybe two inches so you've got an inch on this side and an inch on that side so I'm just going to cut a piece and then I'm trying to keep this all in view I'm going to add I just can't there we go I'm going to so I can see I'm going to have to stand up so I'm going to add hot glue right in the gap there and then a little bit here and a little bit here and then I'm just going to sit this over the top I'm not too worried about how it, if it oozes out and stuff because I'm going to be heavily decorating this this is purely just to keep that all in place so excuse me being so close there but can you see now what you've got, just take all that out. Just tidies that up and it keeps it in that shape. Like so. I think this looks really, really good. I'm so pleased, guys. <laughs> okay, now we just need to get that big piece on the back. Okay, so to do the back, you would still be able to get it from one piece of A1, but because of the way I've cut mine, see there, got a funny bit there and there it just won't fit within this kind of area here so I have had to go and cut another piece and what I've done so I've cut it roughly in half and then you're going to basically draw around your let me just get it all in here you're going to draw around it and what you want to do is you want to sit the bottom of this bit here on the along the bottom of this here Sorry, I'm really struggling to keep this all in. So you see I've sat this on the bottom here, so it's right at the back. Don't go down underneath this, you want to go right behind it there. And you'll see mine is, oh gosh, sorry. You'll see mine is nice and flush down here. This is the back. See here, you can just see. So you want to sit it right behind the house. And then, I say the house, well I guess it is, isn't it? Let the end of your, house overhang over your table, your desk, whatever it is, keeping it nice and flush with the bottom and then just draw around it. So I have already done it, I just want to show you where I'm drawing around. So you're drawing from underneath here, straight down, underneath this one, straight down and then just go along the roof. Okay and then when you lift it off you'll be able to join this bit up here. And then you want to cut it. So I've just got my metal ruler. I've got my mat here on my desk so I know it's okay to cut through. You might have to try and line it up a little bit better than what it is. I think that might be slightly off. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go there and then I can always trim it a little bit more if it's overhanging. So push down, push against your ruler. Like so. So I've got a nice line there. And then I'm going to go from there along here. I know I've got a bit of waste. I could have gone more towards the other end, but it doesn't matter. Just cut that bit away. Repeat that on the other side. Okay, so now we've got this shape. And then it should sit perfectly on the back, which it does. 
Now if you go around and you feel you've got anything you want to kind of trim away, then obviously you can, because once we stick this last piece down, you know, that is it. But I think I'm just going to straighten off some of the, the part I've kind of cut on an angle. So I'm just going to go around just very carefully. Just, you want to make sure it's nice and flat so that you can glue. that piece on properly see that's much flatter now that one feels okay you do want it to be completely hidden but what I would say is stick it down you can always trim off those side bits at the end and even that top bit I can trim that off even once I've stuck it down so I'm going to stick this down so right there's no way I'm going to be able to get the hot glue over all of that and stick it down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the hot glue around here and here, all around this bit. And then I'm going to put gel all on, or this, I'm going to put this on all of the inside pieces because I need to make sure this, as long as this outer piece is secure, then I'd be happy. So this stuff doesn't dry straight away. So I'm going to go and run a bead of this along all of these pieces, every single one. Okay, so that's that all in place. Then with my hot glue, I'm gonna go around the and I'm gonna try and go as fast as I can. Just focus on the outer lines, on the outer sides, because that's the most important part. If you get that all secure, then you know that it's bonded against all the other surfaces behind yeah that's really really good I'm so pleased with that so can you see how nice that is all along there you can see it's completely stuck and again there I just need to trim this it's overhanging a bit too much and again along the roof there that's all secure I just need to trim it up a little bit and inside that solvent that cloud them um, the beacons sorry three and one is just doing its thing it will just slowly set but there is our calendar all ready to decorate. Oh, I love it. I'm so pleased with this. Okay, so I've been busy and I've gone ahead and done a lot of this stuff, but I've left one box to show you what I've done. So I have tidied up under here, but I just need to do this one here. So yours will already have been covered because you would have stuck it the right way. And then obviously you can decorate your roof, you know, however you want. Some of you might want to do the individual pieces of craft card like I did for the bird box I think it was or the she shed one of those those boxes and that playlist and stuff will be linked up here because there's some nice ideas there but um when you put your boxes all in you might find some of them are going to have a little, maybe little gaps some of them might not fit so well just that's how it's going to be it's handmade you know if you can get everyone absolutely perfect then you know well done but if you don't then what I've done is so this is one here so for example there's my box when I put it in okay and you can see here it's got like a gap there and it's a little bit more of a bigger gap there so let me just pull that one back out so what I've done is I've cut a piece of cardstock that measures one and three quarters by two and a quarter and you'll want to cut 24. Now if you do want to do 25 there is obviously plenty of room at the top here. I may do, I'm not sure, you'll see in the tutorial if I decide to. Anyway with this piece of cardstock here you want to stick it onto the front where you've got your reinforcement you want to stick it on there. So I'm just going to stick that one down. Keep the glue kind of, you don't want to go right to the edge because it is going to overhang and then stick it down and just make sure you've got an even overhang on all four corners. It will only be minor but it will make a big difference and as you can see all of these look completely like perfect. <laughs> I think they look really really good. So that's that one there and then with whatever decorative paper it is that you want to use you want to add a mat. So this is two by one and a half. Okay, again, I'm just going to add some glue onto the back and then stick that one in the middle. And again, make sure you've got a nice border. I decided to carry on using the same pattern. I just really like it. And I just figured that, you know, over the years, if my tastes change or something, I will always love red at Christmas, but at least it's still going to kind of match. 
so that's that now stuck down now these here are how I'm pulling them out so these are little wooden advent numbers and they're really handy and they are these here so you get 25 number 25 is in there because again I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it but they are by Simply Creative I shared these months ago well not months it's probably about six weeks but anyway I did share them a while back and um hopefully you'll still be able to get them I know that um I think Craft Stash have them online Amazon place like that so I'll link it all below for you and then there is my last number 15 now they do have a self-adhesive foam pad on the back but I've taken it off purely so I can just add hot glue because again I want this to last me a long time and what I figured was that the frame is going to last it should last forever you know as long as this goes away in a protective box each year if anything's going to slowly wear over the years it's going to be the boxes and I could make those again so it's yeah I'm yeah I'm, I'm happy with this one so then that one now can go in its home and they just look so much neater I absolutely love this so you'll see there that I've started to just play around with the trees and I've gone ahead and decorated inside here I've gone a little bit short just up there can you see but by the time I add the snow and all the other decorations that's going to go on in here you're not even going to notice but you want to cut a piece of um, pattern paper I've kept mine as this lovely snowy scene like sky because I thought you know it's a little outdoor scene down here so once we start doing all that than that background I thought worked really well but it measured uh, so because you might be able to just clip it slightly under depending on how much stuck down when you stuck your back on but you want to do maybe seven and one eighth I do maybe seven and a quarter first and then trim down if you need to and then it is by five and a half but you might want to do five and I do maybe five and five eighths just again I'd rather go a little bit bigger and then I've done this piece under here as well that one is seven and one eighth and that will be that length by two and a quarter okay and then for these side pieces here I've kept the same print again and that is ooh, you're looking at two because you would have had this kind of this edging that we put on so just do two will be fine by five and a half again all these measurements will be in my blog okay then also I've gone and decorated the side here and I've used the same papers from the pack which I don't think I've even showed you yet is this one here otherwise I would have added it in at the beginning but it's the Christmas Tales by Dovecraft and it's amazing I absolutely love it so I've gone for this one here so it's just got all the different sentiments really you can see that it says the most wonderful time of the year Merry Christmas and again I just thought something like that is going to kind of it's not really going to date I mean this is a real nice vintage paper anyway so yeah I love it but that there was three and a half because I've wrapped it around so far onto the back ready to decorate the back more but but I've got to add the battery pack and all that kind of stuff so I've just left it like that I mean you don't have to cover it up to be honest I'm, I may not but it's three and a half by this height here which is you're looking at eleven and a half to get it up in there but again maybe do 11 and 5 8 and then trim because you know yours may be just slightly different to mine you know you might have pushed yours down more you might have just changed it up a little bit so okay so it's now the following day because I just thought I'll get all that done and then I can just focus on you know all of the the lovely details so I've pulled some bits together that I think I'm going to use now for the lights I picked up these here which I thought was quite handy actually so it's only small but what it's intended for is to go inside a wine bottle and then that's actually like your cork but I thought it would work really well for this kind of scene you should still be able to get that kind of thing around but it's called an LED wire bottle topper light I also picked up these and you want to look for the rice lights that's what these are these are rice lights they're just tiny little rice shaped lights and these I've got the warm color as well but these ones here are the same but you've got five meters it's just way too much there's so much in there so these are probably going to be used on another project the battery pack is also quite big it takes three AA batteries whereas with these ones here it's got three just small little watch batteries and you can pick those big packs up from the pound shops and things like that so it's easy to you know replace this and I thought two of these so I've got this one here and just take that one off there there you go you can see they've just got on off and what I'm going to do is on the back here so I'm going to put a hole through so it comes through 
the top of here and I'm going to thread the fronts of these through and then I can just stick with some hot glue on the bottom the two of those just on there and it'd be easy for me to turn them on and off I think it looks quite neat as well so you'll see me do that in the video again I'm going to put a lot of this on high speed in a moment then to decorate I have the artificial snow so this is the simply creative artificial snow and I'm just going to paint using some just some tacky glue here I've just got the Kalau it's like a PVA and I'm going to just paint it on with a paintbrush and then just sprinkle this on and then let it dry and then build up on top and I will build up more around here so you'll see some of the bark but you won't see all of it I want it I want to try and disguise the wire there and just kind of keep building that up so you know that might I don't know I might go back to that like every few days or something so you'll see it kind of laid down and then I can do the rest as and when I've also brought in the skinny tinsel because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant, I'm going to do bunting hanging here with the trees. I want all the detail to really be kept in here and kind of the rest of this to be kept quite plain. So I'm just going to frame the top of the roof here with the skinny tinsel. I quite like that. And then I have this bow, which is a pack. Again, really, really cheap. You get loads there um, for a pound. And I thought that would look nice right at the top there I think that looks really sweet so that's my plans for the roof and then just creating the little Christmas scene so I've got the little sleigh there which I'm probably going to paint up white and put some little string on so it looks like a proper little one that you can pull and then I've got the little toadstools there so I'm probably going to add a few of those I don't have like a father Christmas figure it might be something that I'll leave a space for and then if I can find something but nothing's really caught my eye this is the bunting which is part of the Christmas Tales collection so it matches you can see it's the same print I've used there and that's the same blue but I might use the smaller ones I'm not sure I've also you got the pom-pom trim I've got the red and the white I might end up doing pom-pom trim on the roof I'm not sure you're just going to see me play around but I thought I'd show you the products and kind of talk you through what I'm going to do and then you can see it all at the end so I'm now going to crack on have some fun put a movie on and finish this off So I have pretty much finished. I'm really struggling to fit this in, but if I just show you here, there we go. So I have all the lights kind of dangling down. You can't really see them like this, but when it's you know upright and you're looking at it, you can really see them and you'll see it in the photos. I have some bunting just running along under here. I've done this little topper, which is from the decoupage kit from the same collection. And then I've got the three Christmas trees, toadstool, and there's that little sleigh which I just covered with some gesso. And then I used some of my distressed inks just to make it look a bit brown again. I've put some little, um, you know, string on there to, so you can pull it. And then you've got another toadstool. And I've also added a tree here and here. I just thought that looked quite nice. And then what I've done is I've piled up the snow in the corners and here and what I'd done you would have maybe kind of seen me in this corner here and I was kind of making a paste so I was mixing that artificial snow with PVA glue and then just kind of picking it out with my fingers and pushing it in so this is now all hard but it's got that texture so it still looks like it's fluffy snow and again I've gone around here I painted the bottoms of the trees 
white and then I just and um, when it dry I put some glue and then I sprinkled more of the artificial snow over the top again and you see there's loads of snow all in here what I did is along here I just painted a thin layer because obviously opening the drawers you're just gonna obviously scrape it off so I didn't put a lot on there then the lights I fed through you would have seen that anyway and now I have decided to do a 25 because it does just look too plain up there so what I've got here is I've gone and done another box so exactly the same size as all the others you just need to cut another one same mats and layers same little extra piece on the front and then that 25th then I've got these pieces now it should if you followed my measurements and you've done it the way I've done it it should all still fit but you may need to kind of doctor these pieces a little bit what I've got here is this is going to be for the top so it's going to be like its own little enclosure. So if you see, it's going to kind of be like this. But we're working on angles because we're working in that roof part. Okay, so that's what I'm making. But you're not really going to see any of this. And my big bow at the top covers bits of it anyway. But this piece here is going to be for the roof. So let's do it on this side first. So this is two and three eighths of an inch by one by two and a quarter. And then what I've gone and done is I've cut an, on an angle along the, the two sides here. Can you see if I pop it on its side? Maybe if I do it that way. Can you see it's like an angle? All right, so you can see those angles. Then I've got these two pieces here, which are for the sides. And these are one and three quarters by two and one eighth of an inch. Actually, they should all be two and one eighth of an inch. Oh, that's two and a quarter, but why can't it be two and a quarter? Is that gonna fit or is that gonna stick out more than the others? No, two and a quarter, two and one eighth. <laughs> it's not gonna make any difference. So what I want to do first of all is I would sit, I'm going to try and lay this, because I've got to try and show you, but at the same time I also need to be able to see what I'm doing. So pop your box in and work around the box because it's going to mean you keep everything nice and straight. But you're going to have one of these and whatever angle, so I've also cut an angle on the top of the longer side. So you'll see there's a slight angle there and on this one there's a slight angle along that side there. So you want that one to go that side and that one to go that side. So the angle sits within the angle of the roof. Okay, and you wanna stick these so they line up with these ones here as well. And then this piece, you are literally with the angles facing down, so the same direction as the roof, you're gonna slide that in and it will wedge in and you're just gonna run a little bit of hot glue along there. So I'm gonna pop a piece of, I'm just going to put a bead of hot glue along there and I'm going to carefully slide that one in and just line it up. I need to stand up for this so that you can see it but I can also see where I'm going. So that one there. Keep it lined up with the ones below just kind of get that in place there we go and then the box is going to sit because it's got that little flap overlapping so you want that to kind of come out in front of this because that's where they sit and then this one will go underneath it's just underneath that little lip ever so slightly so it lines up with that one there so again I mean you might choose to do something different you might make another different box shape I know many of you will you know put your own stamp on this anyway. So again, I'm just gonna slide that in there. Just kind of squeeze it together so it will slide in now. Once the roof's on, it will stay in place. Like so, and then you can do a test first and just slide it in. I can see there that is gonna wedge right in. I might just take that out for a minute just so I can see oh, how that's gonna work. See, it's not quite hitting the roof there. I'm not too worried because that bow's going to come down like that. But you can see there how it's all encased. So you do have to kind of, like I said, it, it is a difficult one because you're working with angles. But I'm just going to add some glue all down here and there. Make sure I don't get it on my ribbon. I need to tidy off the ends of my ribbon there but now your 25 has got its home. Just tidy that up a little bit there. There we go. So that's it.
yeah so I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial I hope it has inspired you you know if anything and if you do give this a go I would love to see your versions of it so remember to share them over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group and uh, yeah thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye